reporter Muhammad Ali is crossing into Syria as a violent new phase of the civil war is beginning. He's filming his journey into the north of the country under the protection of fighters from the Free Syrian Army who began the uprising against the regime of Bashar al-Assad, now also battling radical Islamic factions, jihadists who want to take over the country. We have just crossed the Syrian borders with Turkey. The jihadists don't like journalists and they don't like the FSS uh, battalions because uh, they are accusing them that they are spies for the West. It's a very dangerous situation now. Mohammed and the rebels are picked up in a car and driven for seven hours through the night. The situation is not uh, that good as before. New groups came and they started you know, stealing the revolution. So, very important for me to tell what's happening on the ground. No Western media can get in. He's taken to stay at a rebel base where a battalion has retreated after many of their comrades were killed fighting the jihadists. After losing ground to the jihadists in recent months, more moderate rebels are now coming together to fight back. Mohammed is brought to a secret location for a heavily guarded meeting of opposition leaders. They were very worried about the situation, concerned about suicide bombers. They checked my camera equipment, they checked uh, my radio device, everything. They were asking me for who I'm working. I was the only journalist. This meeting was one of the first times the leaders of different factions, religious and secular, had met since the war began. It would turn out to be historic. Over three years of my covering civil war in Syria, I've seen the rebels getting more and more divided. When I saw them coming together, it was very shocking. The group agreed to unite behind the new leader, Jamal Marouf. He was one of the beginning leaders to lead this revolution. So he was very famous and uh, people like him. Marouf would lead a new movement called the Syrian Revolutionary Front to fight against the jihadists. وكل فصيل يتساوى بالظلم مثل النظام فنحن جاهزين لقتاله إشهار السلاح أو في قتالنا فنحن لا نتوانى ولا لحظة في قتاله إذا كان هدفه إسقاط الثورة السورية. A young fighter named Hazm, who was a lieutenant in Assad's army before defecting, has signed up his rebel battalion to the new Syrian Revolutionary Front. He shows Mohammed what they're up against. <laughs> لأنهم أصعب من النظام يخطفون بالمدفعية وال57 على الطرق الآمنة وبالأخص قرية الشيخ علي حيث استشهد فيها 15 مدنة منهم أطفال ونساء وهم يستخدمون على الغام وتفجير السيارات كأنه نحن العدو الرئيسي ولكن هم هم العداء الرئيسيين للثورة السورية ولسوريا بشكل كامل 
The most radical of the jihadist factions to turn against the other rebels is the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS. The group wants to establish an Islamic State in Syria. It claims an alliance with Al-Qaeda, but even Al-Qaeda has severed ties with them. ISIS has been capturing territory all over the north, including the town of Al Atarab, a crucial location in the war. If the jihadists control Al Atarab town, the FSA will be stuck in the south between the jihadists in the north and the regime troops in the south. So it was a very important moment. In November 2013, ISIS staged a show of strength in the town parading a group of rebels captured in battle, including a rebel commander, Hassan Jazra. Locals filmed it on their mobile phones. Muhammad persuades some of the rebels to sneak him into Al Atarab. When I was about to enter the town, the first thing I saw was a big flag of Al Qaeda. The only thing in my mind was that scene of uh, seven fighters of the FSA were executed. I was sure if they catch me and they suspect me, I will be killed. In the town square, ISIS is holding a public rally where fighters are pledging allegiance to global jihad. Muhammad wants to film it, but the rebels say it's too dangerous. So a local man agrees to film it for him. <laughs> We left the rally and the rebels were all worried. Hazem told me, if we are going to leave the situation like this, all of us will be under their control. Mohammed and the rebels have returned to their base just outside Al Atarab. I'm 
The bomb went off at 2 a.m. We were thrown out of our beds. Next morning, the rebels show Mohammed where an ISIS suicide bomber had blown himself up by a local farm. It destroyed houses and killed two of Hazem's men. Suicide bombs were going off almost every day. Hazem told me it had enough. Later that day, Hazem and the new rebel movement prepared to launch one of their first major attacks against ISIS. Allah <laughs> 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 The rebels tell Muhammad that because they have not received military support from the West, they're relying on equipment captured in battle. Many of Hazem's men are devout Muslims, but they say ISIS are extremists who are distorting Islam. Before they go into battle, they're addressed by a young cleric. <laughs> Yusbih Ladin, 
متصارعة متناحرة ما ما يجمعها إلا إلا بغض بعضها لبعض والله العظيم يعني سبحان الله وحوش من بشر أبدا هالجماعة Hazm has a hundred men in his unit, but he's one of the few with any military experience before the war. لك يا زلمة بالكازي الكازي هاي اللي هون على الطريق على طريق الأتاري بالفوج في الكازي فيها شعيب قلوا بعثنا بعمر تحقل هاي القضاط. These were farmers, barbers, shopkeepers. Ordinary working men who'd been fighting in a revolution that has turned into a war against Islamic extremists. <laughs> Hazm leads his men towards the ISIS base just outside Al Atarab. He orders them to surround it. One of the fighters films the battle. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa ahbab Allah fi qadasa. Wa adat saytara ala maqarat. Wa ahbab Allah dakhil fuj. A sniper covers the rebels as they advance. Hazm and his men move in. <laughs> In the face of such a major attack, the ISIS fighters abandon the base. Having taken the base, the rebel forces now had control of Al Atarab. Alhamdulillah, مثل ما قمنا ضد بشار قمنا الحمدلله هلا ضد هذا 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 النظام اللي منحس إنه إحنا أصعب من نظام بشار. لو استعم تروك أكثر من هيك ما ما بتوقع هو راح يسيطر على كافة كان راح يسيطر على كل البلد. وإن شاء الله إحنا بعد ما نخلص نظام داعش راح يتلقى النظام منا ضربات موجعة إن شاء الله. Big moment, you know, that to see people, you know, free again and speaking without, you know, any fears from anyone. مدينة الأتارب كانت بعد ما تحررت من الجيش صارت في أمن وأمان. في وقت هون التخريب، القتل بدم بارد، اختطاف. ثمن ما راح يدفع ولا المواطن ضعيف. هو اللي عابر لا يمكن ابدا لا يمكن نسلم المدينه لو الله طب سلم التيرب ان شاء الله طول ما في نفس طيب وجرب التيرب بس ما بدي هذول المدعين ان الدوله الاسلاميه يجي يحروها احنا نعرضنا He 
went back to ISIS headquarters where the seven rebels had been executed. The slogans were still there, but the building was empty. It was eerie being back there. The town was still in the middle of a war, but life seemed almost normal. 